Did you really? <laughs> Yikes. Okay, that one's live. Oh, okay, so you're doing the low level ones. And that's why. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay. Um, so, wait, oh, it looks like you left. Okay, that's why. Okay, let me get you back in here, Balix. Did it really just kick you from squad? Yikes. Oh, jeez. Okay, so this is one of Amata game with Warframe Breakdown, where we break down Warframe so you can be broken in Warframe. So today what we're going to go over is we're going to go over Railjack. We're going to go over the objectives, how to complete them, what they're called, and the things that you need to do in order to complete them. Okay, so we have a full squad here. I have here Evasive Rocket with me. I have Phony Carp, and I have Balix. Phony has never done Railjack before. We're going to take him on a level 100 mission. Um, he's already been on one, but uh, now he knows to follow Balix around, <laughs> so that way he can see exactly what he's supposed to do and why. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and um, complete the objectives. Okay, so inside of Railjack, you have your Railjack star chart. There are Grenier planets and there are Corpus planets. So the Grenier planets are going to be Earth, Saturn, and Vale Proxima, whereas the uh, Corpus missions are going to be Venus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now, the Venus, Neptune, and Pluto, they do have different missions versus the Grenier. All the Grenier's are basically currently right now just all skirmish missions, which means they're all one set of objectives. Kill cruise ships, kill fighters, disable POIs. Now, on Corpus missions, you have kill fighters, kill cruise ships, and they're going to be disabled POIs, but also they also added void fissures into them, so now you can unlock relics as you kill enemies. So, in addition to the Venus, Neptune, and Pluto Proximas, you also have a Volatile, where everybody has to go to a POI in order to complete one objective, and that's to basically usually destroy an obelisk or a pillar. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and go to... We'll start with Vale Proxima, and we'll go over an uh, Sentient Anomaly at a later time. Oh, well, actually, you know what? We'll go over a Sentient Anomaly right now, so let's just do it. Uh, let me scrap our wreckage, though. So, every single time you get a mission, you might have to scrap some wreckage. Um, wreckage you have a limit on and that will prevent you from going to mission if somebody starts a mission and you have wreckage to scrap and you don't scrap it before the mission starts then you will oftentimes get be kicked from those mission types so this blinking node in Vale Proxima only occurs in Vale Proxima that is essentially anomaly and that is where you can go to a sentient ship and you can get parts to drop for a weapon called the Shidu it's also where you have this pillar where you can smack with your paracesis it used to have significance before doesn't have any significance now it's just you get sentient anomalies when you can essentially anomaly shards that you can give to um, Little Duck to get ephemeras and other items. So we'll go like that. So if you don't really care for ephemeras, then there's really no need to complete the node. But usually people like ephemeras. So I think we're just waiting on evasive. Evasive, we're just waiting on you, man. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Every time you begin Railjack from the dojo, you'll always do it from this screen. <laughs> you'll always get the cinematic from the dojo, so it's pretty cool. I recommend doing it from the dojo. Haven't done it from a relay, though. I'm pretty assume it would do something similar, but most people don't necessarily go to a relay with the squad to start. But we do. Um, another benefit to starting a Railjack mission from the cinematic screen is that you not only do you get to see the cinematic but if somebody does get kicked from your squad anytime you can typically invite them back before the loading screen is over as a means of keeping your squad together because you know no there are no bugs that happen in warframe like ever so there's no need for doing any of that ever just kidding you, you definitely it's definitely helpful Looks so gorgeous, too. Okay. So, let's go a small tour around the do uh, the Railjack. This is the pilot seat. You can use Railjack abilities, fire main weapons. This is navigation where you'll start up different missions while you're still inside Railjack. If you are inside the loading screen, sometimes you can see 
um, a giant worm outside, pretty cool effects. This is a super Death Star laser. It has the Death Star laser and you also has the front forward cannons. Um, there are two turrets in the back here. There's a turret here, and then there's a turret back here. This is different from the turrets that were on the side. And then this hole in the center is where you'd actually leave the rail jack. They did change rail jack, so now it's smaller on the inside um, rather than bigger on the inside. <laughs> Sorry, Doctor Who fans. Um, this is uh, an arc wing slingshot. This will launch you kamikaze at POIs. And here is the forge. This is where you will build energy pads. This goes to everybody. If you do get a fire hazard, you'll have to pull out an Omni tool to repair it. Hey, Valix, switch out. And get your thing out of my face. <laughs> so the very first POI we're going to go to is we're going to ignore those ones. And we're going to ignore the other missions. So as you can see, the objectives we have on the left-hand side, we got fighters, cruise ships. We're going to do those last because we want to do the Ascenti Anomaly Shard. If you do not do the Ascenti Anomaly Shard within 30 minutes before it moves, oftentimes it will lock you out of it. So it's very important to do the Ascenti Anomaly first. Let's speed up our progress here. Okay, and Phony, you're you're following Balix, right? So you're exiting when he exits. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go, Phony. Let's go, Evasive. We're all gonna leave the rail jack. Um, it's more fun to just do this as a group, and it's easier to help everybody. You can. Okay. Where I'm at is where you guys want to hit X. This is the first POI. Phony, where are you going, man? Hit X. There you go. And if you do have your intrinsics upgraded like I do, you, you can bring your rail jack, uh, your Necromex into these POIs. We did get the cool entrance. I like that. Low key, stand by for Titanfall. Wreck that motherfucker. So now we have a new objective that you see that appeared up the top left hand corner. We have to kill 20 sentients, which is what we're going to do. Well, the Necromex are kind of wrecking them, so. Yikes. 400 meters away before you can get your next kill. I think we kind of blew past them. We got Balix there leading the charge. Gotta let my speed reload. Are they just all here in the circle? Because I don't see the circle appearing on the top left hand corner. I don't know. Or they can just die. It's e it's easier. <laughs> there you go. That's one way of looking at it. We're about halfway through. We're at nine out of twenty. Yeah, it's just it. It's a pool of goo. Um, they do act, these pools of goos, if you notice, they do have faces on them. Now, these pools of goos do spawn the little mosquito-like looking ones. They, they, they are bodies. They, they do have faces, though. 
Like, if you just look carefully, you'll see that there's a face that pops out of him. It's very, very creepy. Here are the mosquitoes that I was looking for. No, they're sentient. <laughs> That's kind of what we're doing. So the face is actually on this side, so you can see there's the face. It almost has like Vor's face. As you can see, like it's drinking. Let me see if I can get a better look. It's very creepy. So yeah, there's the face. Oh, no secret tunnel? A thyroid battleist? It says that it says there's supposed to be um, because you're too close to the sun. Yeah, if you stand too close to the sun, you take damage. Maybe there's uh, one over here. Nope, just some loot crates. I like it how the loot crates even have faces on them. So cool. I like it. Uh, I think you mean awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> I found it. It's a symbolist. No. No. Yeah, so if you're wondering, the symbolists are the ones that drop the Shidu parts. The Shidu parts are the giant arm cannon. Um, so that shield guy that we just killed was it. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> that awkward moment where your cat's better than you. Looks like we got one more sentient left before I can warp us all back. Sleeping in the cold below. Okay, so there's several ways to get back. The very first way of getting back typically is you actually have to go to that white point and fly back. That seems long and awfully painful. If you have the tactical intrinsic, you can actually pull out your Omni tool. Yeah, I, I don't think it gives you anything anymore. Like, it used to, but it doesn't. So, the other second way is everybody pulls out their Omni Tool and that warps you back if you have the Tactical Intrinsic for it, or if you have the Augment Form Up, which is, or the mod that we have, which I did equip, is we can force everybody to go back, which is by far the fastest way. And boom, it takes everybody back with me. Very handy, very useful, especially when you're from MPOIs and you want everybody to get back quick. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yes, do not do not die. Please don't. Hey Okay, so everybody let's hop on state battle stations and let's go ahead and take on enemy fighters. So if you hit Y on the big front guns, you can actually here switch out. You can fly uh evasive, you fly. Because I want to show that. That's fine. It doesn't matter. So. 
No, 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 no. I want to do the POIs. So you can hit Y to actually switch to the cannons, or you can hit Y to switch to your Death Star laser. Actually, since we're do since we're already here at the thing, just go ahead and drop me off. I'll go ahead and just fly there. I'll do that POI since we want to get it done faster. Yep. Balix, you can come, I guess, if you want. <laughs> so, when you got the POIs here, there's several objectives. It's kind of a two-hand thing. So, you hack one, you will usually have to destroy something, and then on the outside, a radiator will pop out, and the cruise ship will have to destroy that radiator on the outside of your rock that you're on. So it looks like the first radiator went. There we go. And then, of course, you can just warp back as soon as you do all that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Since you did such a good job, Balix. <laughs> But this time, Balix, uh, let's see, what, which one is it? Do, was that the only POI? That was the only POI. Okay. So then I guess we... we yeah, we are all back in the ship. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, do we got a cruise ship in town? Right bumper B. Uh, no, because you got to do it twice. There you go. That was me, to be certain. <laughs> so you do have rockets. Um, oh, we lost Balix. I'll invite him back. Let me get some energy pads going. Welcome back, Balix. <laughs> I don't know why you keep on getting kicked. It, you can use it whenever you want because it's all based on your own energy pool. It's not based on mine. Yeah, so you'll notice like when you, that orange bar goes down in the bottom that your energy actually drains, not mine. You can just, yeah, you can, you can just, like, slam dunk all those if you wanted. It is big cringe that the, oh. There we go, there's the energy pool. I sure hope we still don't have that bug where cruise ships don't even like to spawn in. There it is. Okay, Balix. Okay, here we go. Did Balix already go to one? Here, point me at one of those cruise ships. Here we go. I got one. Boom. I sure hope this isn't the one Balix on, is on. <laughs> Balix, I swear, if you're here. <laughs> oh, okay. Alright, okay, cool. So, you're not kill him.
Yeah, I'm in a cruise ship. So, if I was to shoot this pillar, this cruise ship would entirely go down. Oh shoot, I sure hope that's not them destroying it. So on a cruise ship, you have seeking rockets. As you can see, they would just suck out that thing and just annihilated it. But they only seek out the enemy when it's locked on. So you got to make sure that those little triangles on the side of the square actually hit the vertices. So there's a guy. He's locked on now. Now let's look at this guy. we got to stay looking at him long enough for it to lock on. There we go. There we go, locking on. You're doing amazing. You, you can't do piloting wrong, really. You're flying in and you got my particle ram up. You just got to run into the guys. Um, I don't know. Do you? Okay. I couldn't see from my screen, but I know it doesn't always show. So on the cruise ships, there's two turrets or two additional turrets. There's a turret here on the other side. These ones do not seek. But they're pretty deadly. They hit harder. And then there's one also down here on the bottom. So there's three turrets. So you'll want to take out those pilots that are on them as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and blow up this cruise ship. So again, we can fly back to the railjack, or we can just use the Omni tool. We can just teleport. And they'll be able to see from the screen out here that I blew that up. So there it is. Here's the one that's blowing up. Here we go. Oh, here, let's, um, let me smack it with the Death Star laser. Point me at it. And this is the last and final way you can destroy a cruise ship. So you can either go on the inside and blow it up, or you can use the Death Star laser. Really, there's only two ways. You cannot destroy a cruise ship by shooting it with uh, the turrets. Here, actually, Bayless, before you destroy that one, before you destroy it, I want to get its health all the way down to zero with turrets. And I know my railjet can do it relatively quickly, so just everybody just shoot at it. Just to show this principle that you cannot, which is big sad, like, you destroyed it anyways. <laughs> we were supposed to get its health all the way down to zero to show that you can't destroy it with turrets. <laughs> It's okay, I guess if anybody's watching, they can they can just come to that own conclusion themselves that you can't. Like it won't take long for them to realize. <laughs> yeah, you'll just you'll be sitting there for like eighteen years. Well, the one the only one they won't even stop moving. They only stop moving if you destroy their engines, which means you have to shoot the engines directly to get that proc. If you like if you get your health all the way down to zero, they will not die. So, like, they don't have any hole left, but they won't die. It's kind of a little on the ridiculous side, but say la vie. Let's go do, um, let's go do a fissure on a, let's go do a fissure on a volatile. So this one at the end, the very last POI, we will have to board it. So the other skirmishes, you do not have to all board the POIs individually. Um, you can, like, just drop everybody off and do all the POIs, but on this one, Everybody has to go to the final POI, which is to destroy the obelisk, and everybody goes in and tries to wreck it from the inside. Um,
Uh, did you did you? Yeah, there's three. There's three Wukongs. <laughs> Mitosis. Yikes. <laughs> I, I appreciate that joke. I actually get that joke. Although, it's a... <laughs> yep, giant worm on the right. Mr. Scary Worm on the right-hand side. You can see the, like, the little, like, five little dots from him. Yeah, that's because, um, Bale you can activate your Celestial Twin, and then somebody can activate Balix's Celestial Twin using the tactical menu. To access the tactical menu, um, what I did earlier, which was to form, use form up on everybody, right bumper, left arrow on the D-pad, and that pulls up your um, tactical menu. You can use other people's abilities. Um, you can use like my Devour, Celestial Twin, only once per squad, War Cry, and then Smoke Screen from Ash. Oh shoot, I'm just invisible. That's cool. Oh, you oh you use Smoke Screen. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but it al it almost looks it almost looks like I'm permanently invisible. Okay, cool. I got worried there for a second because sometimes that's an indicator of like a like right before a crash. Um, yes, yeah, so you can get Sephiroth from this mission because I chose a Pluto one. So Balix, I want to make sure we go. If you're gonna do POIs with me, make sure we go through individually together. Because I want to make sure all the POIs are shown. You got to be slow. Because it doesn't it doesn't make sense to show people POIs and say this is what a POI is. If all right, well you're piloting then invasive. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> okay, come on, Bailey. Let's go do those POIs. Okay, so this is the very first POI. Um, this is on a Corpus mission. So Corpus missions, they always have these optional POIs, especially you always get an optional POI when you're doing a fissure mission to begin with. Um, and this optional POI is where you get your Sevagoth and like unique weapons like the, the uh, Carmine Penta and like Epitaph. But you have to complete these optional ones in order to get those items. And you do have to play the Void Fissure missions in order to get the Sevagoth parts. So here we go. If you fall out anywhere along this point, it will just toss you out into space. So if I just jump, it throws me out into space. If I go back in, you'll see that I can fall off. So there's another optional objective that has a random percent chance spawn um, for completing that one. So here we go, we went back in. Now let's go ahead and fall off in a different location. Oh, hello. Let's go ahead and fall off right here. This is a perfect place to fall off. And as you can see, it puts us right back into space. Really, really cool feature. Really glad that they added that in. Um, Balix, did you go to the next POI? Okay, I'm at the next POI. Okay, great. That's fine. So here's the next POI for a Corpus mission. Typically, it'll have something similar to this effect, but we gotta hack something. But it's kind of like normal missions where you kind of go in, you follow the waypoints, complete the waypoints, and then leave. So Phony went ahead and hacked the console already. So, but that would be the very first objective is to hack. We gotta go get the other drone, that way we can speed up the hacking process. Technically this mission will complete itself if you survive, but... 
of what? Microsoft, $5, $4, $5. Please visit what? Did you make all of those changes? Yes. Okay, well, my, my card's frozen, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. My gosh. I'm streaming. Well, I'm sorry. Some things aren't... My wife, my wife is coming over here, and sometimes, she kills me sometimes. I love her to death. Oh, okay. Let me try getting to him. I might not be able to make it in time since I, I got it nine seconds rather than it. I didn't get to him in time. Wish they would speed up that time. That would actually help out a whole bunch. Here we are. Okay, I'm on my way back. It looks like we completed this POI. Are these shields off? These shields are not off on this uh, optional objective. Can you rocket this um, cruise ship here real quick? That way we can get rid of this POI. He is. He said that he was AFK. Okay. I'm trying to board it. Of course, it doesn't let me activate my abilities. Great. There we go. Took it long enough. So the other way you can get other board the cruise ships. Oh, welcome back. I'm front. <laughs> I did it since Balix wouldn't do the joke. Um. So, yeah. So before they were saying that it was supposed to be that when the railjack hits zero, it doesn't automatically end in mission failure. It slow slowly decays until like. It doesn't complete anymore. But, like, everybody just loses health until, like, everybody dies. But they changed it so back so that it is, like, an ultimate mission failure. Which is kind of a good thing, kind of a bad thing. I wish they would just leave it as, like, you just lost health until it was repaired. But they didn't want to... Uh, the void shrooms just innately strengthen on their own. The, you like you can't like really do anything. <laughs> For sure, man. Stand by for Titanfall.
it's going to force him here. So yeah, if the, if the you got a person that's not coming to the POI, and it's just like any extraction point, you got more than half the squad. If you got half the squad or more here, then it automatically warps everybody else here. And as you can see, our railjack is invincible throughout the duration while we're on this POI. This is the only POI that does this, where it forces everybody to come to it. Yeah, so the objective to this POI is that we have to go to the core of this, and we have to blow it up. And we blow it from the inside and from the outside. Uh, he'll feel very generous, I promise. Well... <laughs> I'm pretty sure we might get a part. Whether or not it's the part you want. Like, it's a 10% chance, technically speaking, so you could do 10 of these. So I think you'd be happy if you even got one part, if since you need all three. Yeah, so that bar, if the, the dial goes below or above, then it automatically prompts the attention of engineers. But since it's better to just go below anyways, nobody really cares. Just because it's so hard to keep it down rather than it is to keep it up. <laughs> I, I don't know why. You shouldn't need help opening a door. We're all at the core anyways. <laughs> yes. I'm looking for... It looks... Oh, we got him. Corpus Engineer is coming in. I got the uh, flame if somebody wants to get the light. If somebody wants to get the uh, engineer. Never mind, I'm right here. He's in front of me. I got him. That was on you. Nah, dude, I pulled out my rail uh, my Necromex for it. That doesn't mean you that doesn't mean you got the kill. I got the affinity from that man. <laughs> uh only fifteen percent is is shared. I got like two thousand from that. It looks like these uh, waypoints are glitching out again. It's still got the main hack objective on my screen. A host, uh, a host bug. Okay, so we got 12 seconds to get to that cooling. We got it. That would have resulted in a mission failure if we didn't get to that in time. Breakable. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we get to the waypoint, we can we can do recall. We can pull out our Omni tools. They just. Um. Yikes. I'm 
I'm 100 meters away. My giant necromech. I kind of might have fallen off the edge a little bit. Um, you go to your options, you go to custom UI, and then you make them all gray. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hashtag change my mind. Okay. You got me, Balix? Next one. And the last one. Oh shoot, switch out, Balix. Fire one ready. Oh, look at that. <laughs> You're welcome, man. <laughs> everybody everybody's looking for that thing because it, it's one of the hardest parts to get so let's see what else we did. did we get everything that we wanted to get to be very happy bada bing bada boom look at that there's your seven goth part we got some love on engines Oh, absolutely. So we could go into the next mission. Um, there's one other one that we haven't done. Um, and that's a defense mission. We could go to Vale Proxima and we could go... Well, oh, technically there's an extermination mission as well. So exterminate is kind of similar to what we just did, except for that you're just killing enemies when you get on board the ship. And then the defense mission is exactly like the extermination and the volatile, except for that you go to a defense point and that stays indefinite. And then, of course, you got that Orphic Venom where... It's exactly like we did before, but you go in and you do Orphix Venom instead. So three variations, all relatively the same gameplay. The only difference is what you do at the end. Defend, Exterminate, Volatile, or Orphix Venom. And the Orphix Venom and the Defense are both endless. So those are all the game type. There's more game types with the Corpus, um, which is there's more opportunities. But Sevagoth is only available from Neptune and Pluto um, Void Fissure missions, where the Epitaph comes from Venus. So, that's uh, everything for Railjack in 2021 with the Corpus. Yeah, Orvix Venom does hurt. They make that so hard. They have like three of them drop all at the exact same time. You literally have to go with a full squad, and it is literal cringe. So, I'm not going to lie. Like I honestly think that the Eidolons are significantly easier than doing the Orvix Venom just with the balancing that they did with Orphix Venom. They basically, it's like as if you're starting like round 30 from like the Orphix Venom event. It's pretty insane. And... <laughs> exactly. So look at that. We got 219,691 credits from... Uh, was that... was. Was that two missions? Did it give us two missions, or is that one mission? I feel like we should have gotten 175k per mission. Or maybe because it was in Pluto, it's slightly less. I'm running an Aros. An Aros Prime, specifically. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I did die out in space because I was reviving people, so there was that. Um, we can. Let me go ahead and end the stream. So continue to break Warframe Breakdown. We'll see you guys next time.